Hi there, and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we'll be considering the conservation of linear momentum, all right? Now, there's a principle that governs the conservation of linear momentum. And the principle states that, the principle of conservation of linear momentum states that in a system of colliding bodies or objects, the total momentum is always conserved provided that there is no net external force acting on the system. It can also be stated that if two or more bodies collide in a closed system, the total momentum before collision is equal to the total momentum after collision. All right. Um, we've been using the word collision, collision, collision. What does collision mean? Now, two bodies are said to collide if they hit against each other, all right? Usually in opposite direction. So let's say I have um, two bodies here. Yeah? Uh, this one here, and then this one here. So let me call this body A, call this body B. Body A is moving this way with a velocity of UA, that's velocity of A. And then body B moves in the opposite direction with, let's say, UB, that's velocity of b now when they collide all right when they collide you have this is before collision this is before collision okay when they collide you have something that looks like this uh, body a and then body b like this this is a this is b you now have these two heating up against themselves like this right so this is this is collision if i say during collision okay so during collision as it hit against themselves of course this is hit this with a force let's call the force f a b also hits a with its own force let's call this f b all right so they collide this is doing collision when they collide um depending on which direction all right uh, it can go in either, either direction. But for this one, let's assume that they both go in the direction of um, A. Let's say this one and this one. Okay. Okay, let's, let's use the size for now. So let's say they both go in the direction of B for now. Um, having this. Now, this does not mean that objects will always go in the direction of the greater mass or the greater force. No. All right. In some cases, they can still go in the direction of A. It's possible that they can go this way after collision. Uh, let me call this V, um, VB, the final velocity after collision. Let me call this VA, final velocity after, of body A, after collision. So I'll call this the after collision diagram. All right, so you have three diagrams here. This is diagram, the first diagram here, the diagram one. This is the second, diagram two. This is a third diagram three, right? So this is before collision, right? They are coming in opposite directions. Now, during collision, they hit against themselves with uh, a particular force. Let's now say that the momentum of um, B is bigger. They will now move in the direction of B. So usually when bodies collide, they'll go in the momentum or they move in the direction of the body with the bigger momentum, not just size, all right? Please take note of this. When two bodies collide, both bodies will go in the direction of, of um, the body with the greater momentum. So for this one here, we are assuming that the one with the bigger momentum is B. Please, momentum is not size, all right? It's not size. So we could have a case where these two collide and they will go in this direction. That's this direction. That's if A has a bigger momentum, they will go in the direction of A, all right, irrespective of size. All right, so this is what you should note. So we said that in a system of colliding bodies that the total momentum is conserved, right, um, provided that there is no external force acting on the system. Now, also, we said something from Newton's third law of motion, which is the law of interaction. We said that um, to every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. All right, so if I combine the concept of Newton's third law of motion, which you already said is the law of interaction, with the principle of conservation of momentum, it means that if I sum these forces, all right, so this is a system of colliding bodies. We said 
it will be what? Conserved, right? So from Newton's um, third law of motion and from the principle of conservation of linear momentum, we said for a system of colliding bodies that the total momentum is always conserved, all right? And in mathematical form, we are saying for this case here, during collision here, we are saying that the um, forces here would be conserved. That means I'm saying that Fa, the force with which body A acts, plus the force with which body A acts should be equal to zero, all right? So being, being equal to zero means the net force should be equal to zero because there's no change in force or there's no change in what force because um, it's a conserved concept, of course, for momentum. So I have this. Now, if this is true, record that from Newton's third law of motion, this one goes here and I'll have that Fa will be equal to, this man comes and becomes minus Fb. So we have this. This is inclined to Newton's third law of motion, which says that to every action, there's an equal and opposite. So negative shows opposite reaction. Uh, this is like um, a mathematical expression of it. To every action, Newton's law of interaction, to every action, there's an equal but opposite. Negative showing opposite interaction. This is like Newton's third law of motion, um, the idea. Okay, but again, but we know that from Newton's second law of motion, that F is equal to mass times acceleration. We know this from Newton's second law of motion. Now, if this is true, now what do we have here? It means that for the first one, Fa, it means that for Fa, we'll have that in place of Fa, I'll be having mass of the first one. Now, for this one here, observe we have two different bodies, all right? Body A and body B. So it becomes Ma. So Fa becomes Ma, then A, A, A. Right. Right. The force of A becomes the mass of body A multiplying the acceleration of body A is equal to negative. The force acting on body B becomes the mass of body B multiplying the acceleration of body B. So I have this. Right. So F is equal to Ma. This one here was from Newton's third law of motion. This here is from Newton's second law of motion. We combine the two concepts and we are here that MEAE is equal to minus MBAB. Okay, let's bring in other concepts. Now, we're talking about the concept of linear momentum. So let's talk about momentum. But again, we know that acceleration A is equal to change in velocity all over time. We have this. So if this is true, that means acceleration A is equal to change in velocity V all over T, and that's equal to change in velocity is equal to the difference between final velocity and initial velocity, that's change in velocity all over time. Now, bringing this concept here, I will have that MA in place of AA, but we just said A is equal to V minus U all over T. For this year, I will not be having something that looks like this, something that looks like this. So in place of AA, so A is equal to V, so it becomes VA minus U becomes UA all over T. Uh, for now, let's call it TA. So it's basically the same thing, M times A, all right? So in place of this A here, I'll just put small a, small a, small a. Bring the value of A here. is equal to minus, I have minus MB, so minus MB into AB. Now what's A? We said acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial over time. Just attach B to each of this. It becomes final, sorry, becomes final velocity of body B minus U, initial velocity of body B all over T, time of body B. So we have this. All right. So it's basically the same thing. I'm just putting A and B to differentiate for body A and then body B. But there's something to note. But if you observe, this one here happened at the same time. Both bodies will collide at the same time. All right. 
it is collected at the same time. What does it mean? But CA is equal to CB. Now, this is true because the bodies are colliding at the same time. Now, if they are equal, there's a concept in mathematics where if two denominators are equal on both sides, they cancel out. If they cancel out, what happens? It means that this will cancel this. It's a mathematical correct approach, all right? If two denominators are equal, they can cancel out, and it's correct. So if they cancel out, what do I have? I have just numerator here, which is MA into VA minus UA is equal to this one here, minus MB into VB minus UB. So I have this. All right, so we have this concept here. What next? Of course, denominators are out. My next step would be expand the bracket. So expand the bracket, what do I have here? This and this, I have MA into this, VA. This and minus UA becomes MA, UA. The minus sign first, so minus MA, UA is equal to minus times plus minus mb times vb becomes mb vb minus times minus is plus mb times ub becomes mb ub so we have this all right so we have this concept here let's move everything initial velocity to one side and everything final velocity to the other side so I have final here, I have final here. Let's bring them together. If I try to bring them together, I'll have something that looks like this. M A, this one here, V A, negative, this is negative, comes here, becomes positive. So plus M B V B is equal to, let's now move all initials together. Starting with the A, this is negative MAUA. Move it over here, it becomes positive. I'm having positive MAUA. This man is positive. So plus MBUB. So I have this. All right, so this is what I have. But then, so that we have the A, um, so that we have the initial before final, let's take the initial to the, uh, let's take the initial to the, left hand side okay so move this one over here move this over here they are the same thing actually so if i move this one over here all right uh, i'm not actually moving it over i'm just um trying to uh, should, should i use the word reconstruct trying to just reconstruct them now i know this i know that if three is equal to a that means a is equal to three i just swap position and it's correct use this idea here it means that if this is equal to this then that means this one here should be equal to this that means that m a u a plus m b u b is equal to this one here that's m a v a plus m b v b this becomes the equation for the conservation of linear momentum please this is the equation all right mass mass we are saying that the product of the mass and the initial velocity of the first body or body a plus the product of the mass and the mass and the initial velocity of the second body that's body b will be equal to the product of the mass and the final velocity of the first body plus the product of the mass and the final velocity of the second body, all right? So this is the um, law of conservation of linear momentum in mathematical form, all right? Let's take some problems on this, and then we'll see how we can solve problems on the law of conservation of linear momentum. All right, let's look at this question. This question says, a body of mass, two kilogram, moves with an initial velocity, five meter per second, 
and collides with another body of mass, 15 kilogram, moving at 0 0.3 meter per second, full stop. If after collision, the body of mass, 2 kilogram, moves with a velocity of 4 meter per second, what is the velocity of the 15 kilogram body? All right, let's get this done, please. So solution, solution um, given, given, let's list start giving parameters. So solution number one, they said a body of mass, two kilogram. So let's call this body one or body A. Let's call it body one or body A. Okay, let's say mass of A is equal to two kilogram. Okay. It said moves with an initial velocity so number two i have the initial velocity of this body a as equal to five meters per second okay next up it said and collides with another body of mass 15 kilogram number next up i'm giving the second mass so let's say mb as equal to 15 kilogram moving at 0 0.3 meter per second by four it means that the initial velocity of this second body b or of the 15 kilogram mass body is about 0 0.3 meter per second what's next there they said if after collision the body of mass 2 kg the body of mass 2 kg is the first body they said moves with a velocity of four meter per second that means the final velocity, let me call this fifth one there. That means V, number five, V of A is equal to four meter per second. Okay. What is the velocity or final velocity of the 15 kilogram um, body? That's this one here. We have to find V, final velocity of B is equal to unknown all right we have to find this so quite a simple question from here let's recall let's recall the equation of conservation of momentum it says that m a u a plus m b u b is equal to m a v a plus m b VB. All right. Bring in values. MA is about 2 into UA is about 5 plus MB, that's 15. 15 into UB. UB is about 0 0.3. Okay. It's equal to. Now, I am imputing the values because all the SI units are in their basic form. So I'm not converting. All right, um, MA, again, MA is 2, that becomes 2 into VA, VA is 4, that becomes 4 plus MB, uh, MB is about 15, so it becomes 15 into VB, that's the unknown value, which we have to find the final velocity of the 15 kilogram um, mass or body. All right, so let's multiply this. So first is first, we have two times five, that's 10 plus 0 0.3 times this, that should be about 4.5. So 4.5, 15 times 0 0.3, that should be 4.5. Okay. Is equal to 2 times 4, that's 8, plus 15 times VB, 15 VB. So I have this. 10 plus 4.5 gives you 14.5 is equal to 8 plus 15 VB. So I have this. So move this one over here. 14.5. It comes and becomes minus 8 is equal to 15 V. 
VB. Uh, do a little subtraction. Uh, 14.5 minus 8. That's about 6.5. So 6.5 is equal to 15 VB. So guess VB, I'll divide here by 15. I'll divide here by 15. This cancels this. So VB, I'll have that the final velocity of the 15 kg body is equal to 6.5 over 15. That's about 0 0.43 in meter per second. So this becomes the answer. All right. So this is how I solve this question. All right. So this is the answer to this question. All right. Before we go, let's consider something. Let's try to do a diagrammatic representation of this question. So you have two bodies. Um, the first one is 2 kg. The second one is 15 kg. That means mass A will be smaller per se. Let's just make it smaller. So this is 2 kg um, mass. Then we have the 15 kg mass, this one here, about 15 kg. This is moving with a velocity of the 2 kg moves with an initial velocity of 5 meter per second. This is 5 meters per second. The 15 kg moves with um, initially 0 0.3. So I'm having this 0 0.3 meter per second. Now we said these two bodies collided. Question will now be what if you're asked to find the direction that the body moves? So what would you do? Now basically, basically the direction of the of the bodies after impact basically is dependent on the direction of the, the body with the greater momentum. So the question is this, which of these two has a greater momentum? Let's start with this one here. This is body A. For body A, for body A here, the momentum P is equal to the mass of A times initial of A, and that's equal to mass of A is 2 times initial velocity of A is 5. That means body A is moving with the momentum of about 10 kilogram meter per second. So we have this. Okay. What about body B? Well, let me call this PA. Okay. So PA is this. It's called a small p. PA. All right. Let's come to body B. Momentum of body B is equal to mass of body B times initial velocity of body B. And that's equal to, what's the mass of B? Mass of B is about 15 kilograms. Initial velocity of B is 0 0.3. That becomes 15 times. This becomes 15 times. This is 0 0.3. Combine this. This gives you 4.5 um, kilogram meter per second. This is this. So we have this. All right. So if this is the case here, we can see that um, body A, this one here, this is body A, this is body B, we can see that body A has a greater momentum than body B. So if they collide, most likely they will both go in the direction of body A because body A has the greater momentum. So after collision, the direction will go this way, the same as body A. And again, this reiterates the, the idea that I, that I shared earlier when I said the direction that bodies will go after collision is not dependent on the mass of the body or of the size. So you would think that since this man is 15 and this one is 2, 15 is over, 15 is over 7 times of this. So this second body here, body B, has over 7 times the mass of A. But then A is coming with a bigger momentum. Why? Because it is moving with what there? A higher velocity. That's 5 as compared to 0 0.3. All right? So most likely, after collision, the body might, with the, bo the body would go in the direction of um, body A, right? All right? So this is what you have here, all right? I prepared um, 
50, over 50 videos on physics, chemistry, and mathematics. To access my video courses for JAM and YX students, simply visit my website www.jonaimano.com forward slash courses and you see um, the course for YX, JAM slash YX classes. So you get the course and you see over 50 classes on physics, chemistry, um, mathematics, and the rest of them. All right. Okay, then. See you in the next class.